to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I feel like God is calling me to go deeper. Amen. You may be seated. I'm absolutely amazed by the ocean, the exotic and aquatic creatures that we're unable to see on the surface. It is only when deep sea divers go deep into the sea and the ocean that they're able to show us some amazing life forms we otherwise would not see. Because they're bold and because they're brave enough to go deep down into the ocean. They're able to not only bring back treasures of what they've seen, but it also allows us a glimpse into a world that is beyond the natural sight that we have. And in a real sense, I believe there's some things God wants to show you and I. I believe there's some sides of God he wants to reveal to us, some blessings, some treasures, some stuff we would not have been able to see unless we had decided to go deeper in him. In fact, the Bible says that God's thoughts and ways are higher than ours. God sees further than what we do. And in fact, it said that deep things belong to him. Oh, the depths and the riches of God, how unfathomable and unsearchable are his ways. But yet God wants to show us some things we would not see unless we decide to get deep in his word and deep in prayer and deep in determining to go after him. This is, in fact, what God speaks to the life of Peter. Peter is the chief apostle Jesus handpicks and selects, and he stops by while he is speaking to a multitude and speaks directly to him. Notice that while Jesus is speaking to a multitude, there is a corporate message for a multitude of people to hear, but then he also has something specific to say to Peter. Can I tell y'all, as all of us who are gathered in here today, there's something God is speaking to all of us in general, but there's something specific God wants to reveal to you about himself, his will, and his word. And it's important for us to open up our ears anytime that the word is going forth. It's important for us to open up our hearts to hear what God has to say. And notice the first thing that we see is the call. Let the church say the call. The Bible says when Jesus goes to Peter, he's standing in his boat. Watch this. He speaks to him and he says, Peter, I want you to leave the shallow waters and I want you to go in deeper waters. And there I want you to lay down your nets because there's something I want for you to catch. You are not going to catch where you are. Now, this is strange because fishermen during this time were known to fish during the night in shallow waters where they would drop down their nets where the fish would not see them because it's nighttime. And so they drop their nets in the shallow water at nighttime because the fish would migrate to shallow waters during the night. But now they have migrated out into the deep during the daylight hours. And if Peter is going to drop down his net, then it means that the fish perhaps are going to see his nets. And it's in fact too far for him to reach them because the fish would migrate out into the deep. This is important for us to notice and understand. Jesus is calling him to do something that is strange. It is abnormal. It's outside of the box. It is not what people are known to do who are in his profession. It's something that's strange but sometimes God calls us to do some strange stuff that other people will not understand. Sometimes God calls us to do stuff that people will not be able to follow. Sometimes God calls us to operate in a space we've never operated in but that's where we got to determine whether or not we're going to trust in God and what he said or are we going to operate off what we see because God can see further than you can God can see broader than you can God can see deeper than you can and it comes a point you got to stop relying on what you know and say nevertheless at your word God I believe you can see some stuff I can't see I believe there's some stuff I don't know I believe I got some blind spots so I got to learn how to trust you and sometimes that means doing some strange things yeah the life of a Christian is strange because we're called to do strange stuff that the world doesn't understand okay for instance God calls us to hold our peace and let him fight our battles when the world says get even with people who do you wrong and eye for eye and tooth for tooth, God calls for us to use restraint and discipline. When the world says have at it, do what feels good to you, throw caution to the wind, don't be concerned about what could go wrong, God says no, I want you to learn to have some divine discipline and judgment. God says I want you to learn to look at spiritual things when the world is looking at natural things because we don't look at the things which are seen, we look at the things which are not seen. For the things which are 
are seen are natural, but the things which are not seen are eternal. God calls for us to do some strange stuff, but I promise you when you do stuff God's way, it will always work out the way you want it. I promise you, though it seems strange, it's going to make sense after a while. Matter of fact, let me pause right there because somebody in here right now, you've been called to do some strange stuff and you can't fit in certain circles because your concepts and ideas are strange to them. But I promise you, it's going to make sense after a while. And if you keep on following after what God said, I promise you he's got something greater in store. Peter, I need you to do something strange. Jesus, it doesn't make sense. Leave where I am. Go out to where those fish are. That seems strange. Yet, as a Christian, hear me. We are called to go against the grain. In fact, salmon are different from other fish. Because salmon, unlike other fish, swim upstream. All the other fish go with the current. They flow in the current. They flow with the stream. But salmon swim against the current. While the world is going one way, those of us who are believers are called to go upstream. We're called to go against the grain. And sometime you are not going to fit in, but Jesus says, I need you to do some stuff that's strange. But hold on. It's not just strange. What he's calling Peter to do is to come out of what is shallow. Okay, don't miss this. Uh, he says, Peter, I need you. Leave where you are. Go out into the deep. Watch this. This wasn't the first time that Jesus and Peter had an encounter. Jesus had already been to Peter's house in Luke chapter 4. He had healed Peter's mother-in-law. Now in chapter 5, watch Jesus. Yeah, I know you know me on a surface level. I know you know me on a superficial level, but I need you to go deeper in terms of your relationship with me. I want a more intimate personal relationship with you so I need you to come out of a shallow superficial surface relationship and I need you to take this thing deeper can I talk to those of us who are here today I don't care what level you are at in your walk with Jesus he still wants you to go deeper he does not want you to be content with the surface superficial shallow Christianity where you only know him as somebody who comes through when you need him. He wants you to have a deeper prayer life. He wants you to have deeper devotion. He wants you to have deeper dedication. He wants you to follow him more closely. He wants to build something more intimate. I don't even care if you've been serving all along. There's still some more service in you. I don't care how long you've been singing. There's still some more singing in you. I don't care what you fasted and prayed for in the past. God got some new revelation he want to give you. And I want to know is there anybody in here today that's not content to have a shallow, superficial relationship with God? God, I want something deeper. I don't just want to worship you on Sunday. I need you to come through on my job on Monday. I need you to open up doors on Tuesday. I need you to make some ways on Wednesday. I need you to direct me on Thursday. Then, God, I need you to give me assurance on Friday so that when I come to church on Sunday, I'm worshiping out of the overflow. I'm sorry, is there anybody here who wants to take this thing with God deeper? I'm not content with what's on the surface. I'm going deeper than that. He says, Peter, I know you know me as the healer who can come through for your mother-in-law. I know, I know you know me in one capacity, but I need you to take this thing deeper than that. Now, those of us who are in here today, uh, New Direction Church is a multicultural multi-generational church, okay? Multicultural. Yeah, you can give God some glory for that. Multicultural, multi-generational church, okay? But for those of us who are African-American in the room, we know that we don't like to get deep in the water. Y'all know most of the time when we go to the water, we don't get all the way in the water. 
We just put on a swimsuit and some trunks, and we sit on the edge of the water, get our feet wet, and we cool to take a selfie like that. Y'all know we will go all the way to Miami, put on our best outfit just to go and stand in the ocean, not go all the way and swim in it or go deep, but we content taking a selfie in the sunshine. No, it's time for you to go deeper. Don't be content just putting your feet in the shallow waters of faith in Jesus Christ. Don't be content taking a selfie while you in worship. Thank God that you will. But is there anybody up in here who says, I want to take my prayer life deeper. I don't just want to pray about what I need. I want to pray about what God is doing in my church. I want to pray about what God is doing in my city. I want to pray for my neighbor who don't like me. I don't want to be content just to have a relationship with God where I ask him to come through and bless me. I need God to direct my entire life. If that's you, make some noise up in this house if it's time for you to go deeper than that. My wife and I were in Jamaica and when we were in Jamaica at Hard Rock Cafe all of us who were there celebrating my wife, now she's a great swimmer and even diver. We go to Jamaica there at Hard Rock Cafe and I'm watching the Jamaicans who are nature boys, islanders jumping and diving off huge precipices then my wife was audacious enough to step out herself and decide she was going to dive in. I had never seen her do something so bold in my life. I watched First Lady go out, jump and dive, and I said, wow, she wasn't content to just hang around the water like us. She said, I don't know when I'm going to come back again. I'm going to jump in this thing and it's, don't be content to be at church today and you hear about Jesus Christ. If you don't know him, it's time for you to jump in. Is there anybody up in this house who doesn't just want to get your feet wet? God, I want you to get all over me. I want you to cover me with your grace, cover me with your favor, cover me with your love. I've got to go deeper. And so... We see the call. But then number two, we see the consent. Because Jesus comes to Peter, don't miss this, and he says, Peter, I need you to go out into the deep. Jesus, it doesn't make sense. We see the call, but then see the consent. First we see Peter object, then we see him obey. First he objects, because what Jesus calls him to do is strength. Sometime what God calls you to do does not make sense. In fact, notice what the issue is. Peter had a relationship with Jesus on the surface. Now, Jesus wants to completely control him. Because when Jesus gets on your boat, he's not content to have part of you. He wants all of you. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And sometimes we got an issue with compartmentalizing our relationship with God. Where we say, God, you can touch this, but you can keep your hands off this. I make my own moves in this area because notice what the problem is. Uh, Jesus comes to Peter. Watch this. Here's the logic. Jesus, you are a preacher and a healer and a carpenter. I am the fisherman. I am a fifth generation fisherman. In fact, Jesus, I've been, I've been fishing all night. My family has been in fishing. I've inherited a fishing business. All I know is fishing. Why don't you stick to preaching and why don't you stick to carpentry and let me stick to fishing? I know how to fish better than you do. In order for him to let Jesus direct him, he is going to have to humble himself and let Jesus give him direction in an area Area of his life he's used to having control over but Jesus says no I don't want the wheel once you wreck I want the wheel before you wreck because we love to say Jesus take the wheel after we done wrecked why don't you give Jesus the wheel so you won't wreck Jesus says give me the wheel because I'm not content to be on your boat I want to be the captain of the ship I want to be the shot caller I want to tell you how to live I want to tell you how to manage your money. I want to tell you how to build relationships. I want to tell you how to treat people. I want to tell you how to operate in your career. I want some say in what your major is in college. I want to be the one that 
directs your life. I don't just want to be on your boat. I want to be the captain of your ship. Is there anybody in here that know Jesus won't steer you wrong? Okay, here's what we like to do. Jesus, okay, it's cool. You know, I love you. You can hang out on my boat, but you can't control it. Okay, here it is. Uh, I, you're a savior. I love you. That's as deep as I want to go with this. But I can pick my own mate. I can manage my money without giving you a tithe. I believe I know this better than you do. But in order for you to get success in life and what God is calling for you to do, you got to turn over some parts to God you have been holding on to and controlling. I'm talking to some control freaks up in here. I identify with you. I like control over situations, and I don't like to turn it loose. But sometimes God will take control where you don't have any answers. You don't have any solutions. Your way has not been working. You can't solve your own problems, so you can learn to look to him. Peter, you might as well do it my way because your way ain't been working this long. You got nothing to show for what you've been doing, but I can lead you to get some stuff you couldn't have got on your own. I need you to trust me. My father, I was raised hunting and fishing. Since I was 11 years old, I was shooting shotguns, and hunting and fishing. One thing I love about my father growing up in the South, we go hunting and fishing. When we would go out fishing, we would fish just throwing rods. But I discovered on one occasion we were out fishing, he had a fish finder. And uh, did some research on the fish finders. The reason those professional fishermen are so successful is because they have these expensive fish finders. The fish finders are on their boats. So when you see them reel in a big catch, a pretty fish, a huge bass, all these different fish that they go after, it's not because they're better than you. It's because they've got some resources that lead them to find the fish. And because they've got these fish finders, the fish finders help them to separate between what's seaweed and what's fish. The fish finders help them know just where to drop down their nets and their rods. So that's why they're so, so successful at what they fish for, because they got a fish finder that helps them find some fish they go after. Can I talk to somebody here who's trying to find some fish? I want to talk to a single in here who's trying to fish for a mate, why don't you let God lead you by the Holy Spirit and the Word? Because he knows how to separate the seaweed from the turtles. He knows how to separate the stuff that looks like it's the right thing from the real thing. I'm talking to somebody who's fishing for a job. Why don't you start praying and seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness? Because when you follow after God, he'll lead you to find some stuff you're looking for. I'm talking to somebody trying to get their business off the ground. you trying to get new clients and customers why don't you learn to build your business the way Jesus said build it and watch God find the fish for you I'm sorry is there anybody here who knows God knows how to help you find the stuff you are looking for because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord he knows just where to tell you to drop your nets Peter I know it's strange I know it don't make sense I know you failed. I know the time is odd. I know it's strange. Watch the text. But I need you to trust me on this one and go deeper. I need you to move from just looking at the facts to operating by faith. I need you to move, don't miss this, from operating off your feelings to operating by faith. Because your feelings are telling you, oh, this ain't going to work. I'm going to be embarrassed. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Do you know how many people miss stuff because they're concerned about folks' opinion? Do you know how many people miss out on what God is doing? Because I promise you, I'm going to tell you again in the atmosphere, people will never get on board with you when you do it. They'll get on board once it works. Your job is determined it's going to work. Your job is determined Jesus keeps with you. Your job is to follow after what God said because opinions shift and change. And sometimes God will let you look like a fool before you catch your fish. Sometimes God wants people to look long enough at you being crazy, cleaning off your net up. That ain't going to work. Yeah, but I got Jesus. 
Jesus on board. And because I got Jesus on board, I promise you I won't come back empty-handed. I feel like preaching right there. Is there anybody here who can testify for the blessings in your life? It's not you can take the credit, but you got Jesus rolling with you. Make some noise all over this house. If God has caused you to catch some stuff, you couldn't have caught on your own. I need you move from the facts. What are the facts? Okay, here it is. The facts will keep you from operating by faith. The facts are the fish are in the deeper area. Never caught fish like that the way you're telling me to do it. That's the facts. The facts are I've been working all night, drained mentally, emotionally, tired. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of operating and getting nothing to show for it. That's the facts. But faith says, nevertheless, at your word, because I believe your word overrides the facts. So I got to put my faith in your word and over my facts, because I believe, nevertheless, you're going to cause what I'm going after to happen. Here it is. Don't miss this. We see the call. Go deep. We see the consent, nevertheless. But then look at the catch. Here's what I love about this text is that the Bible says Peter did what Jesus said, went out into the deep waters, dropped his nets, and caught a catch so big his boat was about to capsize. The catch is so big that he's got to share some of it. The blessing is so big he can't keep it to himself. In fact, the net was about to break. Peter, you had nothing until I showed up on your boat. Now that I got on your boat, I gave you net breaking blessings. Now that you started doing it my way, I started causing the stuff you couldn't find to find you. Now that you started doing it my way, the stuff you couldn't catch, I caused it to catch up with you. I'm sorry when you get really good in God, you don't have to brown nose, you don't have to boot lick, you don't have to chase in behind people. God will cause blessings to track you down. I promise you when you get in the will of God and start following his word. God will bless you coming in and God will bless you going out. Is there anybody up in this house who believe God is getting ready to give you some net breaking blessings? You're going to have to share some of it. Okay. Here it is. Everybody else was cleaning their nets. His nets were full. Why? Because he got Jesus on board. Those of us who are in here right now, some people don't understand why certain people bless and they advance in life and doors open for them. But what they don't know is when you get home and get behind closed doors, man, you hit the floor and what they can't see is you're on your knees. You praying, you fasting, you giving, you sowing, you worshiping. It's my private obedience that's giving me my public blessings. And if you want to get what I got, you better learn how to do what I did. I simply did what the man said. I'm sorry, is there anybody in here that know God favor follows you when you do it God's way? Okay, can I go deeper? Pun intended. Okay, right side said it. Left side, can I go deeper? Pun intended. Okay, his boat is about to capsize because the catch is so big. He has to call other people over to share in the blessing because when God blesses you, it involves you, but it's not about you. I want you to be so big that I can use you to bless people who don't even like you. I want to bless you so big. You can not only bless your family and your friends, but you can forgive some people who didn't want to see you catch nothing, and you can still watch them eat. Is there anybody up in here? My prayers are bigger than bless me, my three, and my four. God bless all the people around me, even the ones who don't like me. Because God didn't promise to give you a table in the absence of your enemies. He said, I'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. I want some people who didn't think you was going to catch nothing to have to come to you to get some of what I gave you. 
but here it is. I need you to be big enough that you don't mind sharing. Terry, I need you to be big enough you don't mind sharing it with somebody else. Because if all you think God, God is not a God of subtraction, he's not a God of addition, he's a God of multiplication. God will multiply you so much so that it will spill over, that you got to share some it. But if you're going to be the bigger person, you got to be the bigger person. You got to understand it involves me, but it's not all about me. God, you only want to blow blessing, blessings through me so I can be a blessing to somebody else. So he called the other boats over. The Bible says they share in some of what he called. Now, here's what I love. Notice the text. After they're sharing in what he called, Jesus shows Peter himself. And Peter, through the catch, says, Jesus, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. Here's what I love about Jesus. He did not condemn him and make him feel worse than he already felt. He simply showed him through the catch that he wanted him to do something greater. He said, Peter, the reason I got in your boat, because it's bigger than your boat. I don't want you caught up in you catching fish, because it's not about the fish. It's about the call I placed on your life. I can give you some more fish. I wanted you to know I can bless you with material stuff. I need you to understand is something deeper spiritually. You're, you're catching the fish. That's your career. But I got a greater call on your life. I am going to make you a fisherman of men. And though you're imperfect, you're imperfect. Though you got flaws and shortcomings. Though you don't always do everything right. Though you got some habits and some hangups. Though you got some proclivities. Though you got some struggles people don't know nothing about. Though you battle with low self-esteem sometimes. Though you doubt yourself sometime. They only see the highlight reels. They don't see you, you shaking and trembling, doing what God called you to do. I'm still going to use you. I'm sorry. I could close it right there. But just for station identification, have I got some company up in this house who could just give God some glory because he's using you despite you. Because he's using you with all your flaws. That he's working with you despite your imperfections. Please be patient with me. God's not through with me yeah. Okay. Let me give this to you real quick. I don't want you to miss this. Uh, I don't want you to miss this, and I'm going to hasten to my close. Last point, here it is. I don't want you to miss this. Watch this. Um, Peter, it was never about the fish, Crystal. Here it is. Peter, that's your career. Your career is what you get paid to do. Your calling is what you were made to do. I'm showing you in your career what I can do with you in your calling. If I blessed you like that in your career, what might I do if you start walking in your calling? I need you to understand it's not all about the fish. I don't want you to be so shallow that you just caught up in getting a big check. I don't want you to be so shallow that all you want to do is get a nice house and get a car and say, picture me rolling. That's your career. I'll give you some fish. But I need you to be deeper than that. I need you to understand I put you on the earth to be a world changer, to transform people's lives, and I simply touched your career so you could start walking in your calling. Sometime your career will coincide with your calling, but what happens when your career conflicts with your calling? Because, Peter, I need you to walk away from the boat, but what you walk away from will determine what you walk into. I'm getting ready to walk you into something a whole lot bigger than a boatload of fish. I'm sorry, I feel it in the atmosphere. Uh, there's some people up in this place who believe God got something great in store for your life? Is there anybody in here that believe God got a call and anointing over your life for you to walk into spaces and places you didn't even think were possible?